All right, I think we're going. So I'm going to go ahead and call on a couple of people to introduce themselves. Um, and then uh, Kim and Jamie will kick it off. So Kim, you're on my screen first. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? So my name is Kim Ketch. Welcome. I'm this one of the school counselors. I have students with the last names A through K. I'm also the key club advisor. Jamie. I'm Jamie Martell. I'm the other school counselor. I have students with the last names L through Z. Excellent. All right, Meredith, are you still with us? Hi, George. Meredith Lee and I am the MISTI partner full town. Um, what that means is you have me as your resource to file your FAFSAs. Um, I will be there from start to finish. Um, and we set up appointments with guidance um, and I'm there for any questions that you may have. Excellent. And just as a plug for my own, she's a great resource just to have that person sit there and say, Yes, all your numbers are in the right place. You can go ahead and hit submit. Um, it's a great resource that not every school has. So she will make an individual appointment with everybody. So if the financial piece makes you a little nervous, we do have that support person in place to help you. Um, so as Myla's talking later about the financial aid piece, um, just keep that in mind that Meredith is a great resource. She works at UMaine. Um, so she lives this every day um, and we'll get more information out about how everybody's going to make those appointments with her. Um, but I do really appreciate the support that she brings to our families. Um, Myla, do you want to take a minute and just introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Myla Tappan. Um, I work for the Finance Authority of Maine. And so what we do is just provide students and families throughout the state um, support with the financial aid process. So. Um, in the second part of tonight's session, we're just going to talk about the FAFSA and what you need to do to get prepared and some of the most common questions related to the FAFSA um, with the goal of having you feel more comfortable about that whole part of the process. So I look forward to talking to you all in a bit. Excellent. Great. All right. Kim and Jamie, the floor is yours. So it's going to take me a second to share my screen, but Kim, I think you're still muted. I am. I, just, I was just like, Jamie's going to be my navigator on sharing the screen. So the first, the first thing that we're going to go through is really um, the the senior uh, college packet that we give give all of our seniors. Here we go. All right, so. First thing I'm putting a plug in for um, our Remind app. Um, you can join by text or you can join via email and that's the information um, right there. So all, we ask all our seniors, well, we try to get all our seniors to join uh, Remind. Uh, this is a venue that we use to um, get out reminders like senior reminders, we'll put scholarships on here. Um, but we welcome what we found out that it was it was great to open this up to parents as well. Um, kids would see it and then kind of, you know, maybe forget about some deadlines and things. So we opened it up to parents. So please feel free to join. We'd love to have you. And then you get to see um, that you um, the same thing your, your student would would see scholarships, deadline reminders, things like that. So great opportunity to to see what they see and. Um, maybe send some reminders to them to, to meet some deadlines. So uh, if you have any questions, you know, don't hesitate and, and let me know, but that's the way to join, couple different options there. All right, so what we're gonna show, what we're showing you right now is the senior packet that we're, we give to all seniors. Um, students that are taking Jamie and I's uh, Success 101 class, um, have actually already done this or are kind of in, a, in the throes of finishing it up. Uh, but this is what, this whole packet really is what we use internally to help us write really good recommendation letters for your students. Uh, so as much information as we can get from them, um, the better the letter and more personal, uh, you know, things that we can say about them. Colleges typically, 
don't want us to write letters that talk about anything they can read on a transcript. So this kind of pulls um, some more personal things with extracurriculars and, and you know, so forth. Um, that helps us write those letters. So this first page is just simply they write their name, address, uh, email address in any any schools that they think they might apply to. It's not a hard and fast, you know, thing. It's a it's an ongoing document. So they might put schools on there that they never apply to. And on the on the flip side, they might um, have schools that they didn't put on there that they they want to apply to. So it just gives us kind of a, a general idea, especially when we're trying to help them with yeah. tracking deadlines um, to each of the schools that they're applying to. Okay, so this next form um, is really is super helpful to us because it's kind of like a historical uh, shot of you know their high school career so on here they put work experience they put um community service volunteer things and uh, and that can be anything to do with uh church or even volunteer experience that they've done um with sports or, or other groups that they're involved with um other they put athletics are on there any leadership positions jay rotsey um positions that they've held or just the fact that they're in there, like Jay Rossi has a lot of different offshoots that kids can really get involved in, uh, key club, student council, thing, and also things outside of school. There's a lot of students who are involved in, in really cool things that are outside of our school building, whether it's travel teams in athletics or I don't know, maybe they went on, you know, a really cool mission trip or just anything that we can pull in and grab and put in that letter. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of that where they have the grades. And um, like I said, if they, you know, if they earn their letters or um, if they won awards, citizenship awards or any any kind of things like that, theater, yearbook. So we we tell them put anything and everything. Sometimes sometimes students feel like they haven't done anything, but they really have. Um, so we kind of help work them through that. All right, this next page is, um, is kind of one of my favorite things that we have students fill out. And this is really some more kind of personalized things. You know, what are your goals? What are your, what are your career goals? What are your college goals? What do, you, what do you see as your strengths? What are you proud of? Um, we also have a spot at the bottom, you know, what, what are some things that, you know, you would like us to, to mention in your letter that, you know, wasn't addressed here. And it, we've had many things we've had, um, you know, students who have really had this like rich experience traveling the world. Um, that's a really cool thing for us to kind of touch upon in their letter. Um, we've had students, um, you, you know, write about, just even some mental health things that they've struggled with, but that they've overcome that's been hard for them and it's kind of a barrier, but they've pushed through. So it could be anything. Um, and usually if it's a, a, like a sensitive topic, I'll, we'll touch base with the student to see, you know, okay, you know, what do you want me to, what do you want me to say? Or I'll say, geez, I'd like to use this and say this. What do you think about that? So we, we will touch base about that, but it could be anything, any like really neat thing that, um, you know, college admissions wouldn't know by looking, looking at a transcript. So, all right. So the next thing is this parents brag sheet. This is your chance um, to brag up your, your student, which is really cool. Um, parents can work together on this or guardians can work together. It, do, it doesn't matter who it could be a grandma, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a parent, but just a chance to kind of brag up your, your student. This is probably Jamie, one of Jamie and I's favorite things to read. I usually laugh, I cry. I go through like this range of emotion as I'm reading this because parents have a unique perspective on their, on their child. Um, so I really enjoy that piece. And sometimes parents pull out, um, things that kids have forgotten about, or just they look at things in a different lens. I'm trying to so this is, this is like, this piece is really awesome for us. And I'll steal, like sometimes parents- And like, now you're using like, your hand to clean it. So- Oh, 
Could, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so a lot of parents like will word things really neat or I'll, I'll steal things. We'll steal things from this all the time and use them as quotes because uh, a lot of, you, you know, your, these are your kids, you, you know them best. So um, yeah, I love those. So brag away, use the front, use the back, do what you want to do. If you know, you want to do two, do two. Um, but yeah, go, go for it. Nothing's, don't feel like you're taking up too much space. Go for it. We love them. All right. So each student in their packet also receives we three, what we call the blue sheets. And we literally call them the blue sheets. All the teachers know what the blue sheets mean. So these are, um, these are recommendation forms uh, that the student will give to, typically they give them to three teachers uh, who know them really well, or teachers that maybe they've had in class multiple times. Generally, we we focus on um, kind of that junior, senior year, uh, because those are kind of what colleges would rather look at versus like a, a freshman year because kids grow and evolve. Um, but they can also, if they, if students have, um, I don't know, like had, are close to a boss, they can, they can give one to their boss, they can give one to their coach. So there's, they're not hard and fast, just, just three teachers. If students are going into, for instance, like a STEM field, um, be a good idea to have a STEM teacher. So a math or science teacher, you know, fill one of these out and, and kind of rate. I do want to say these these sheets. Once they're the, the students give them to the teachers or whoever, they come directly to us afterwards. So we're the only ones that see these sheets. And again, we, we use these just as another you know cool tool to to write their letter. Uh, teachers say um, some really neat things, and again, they they see students in the classroom and you know, thinking deeply and see their involvement and engagement. So uh, they do a really nice job with this. I do want to make a point to say, this is not the recommendation letter. This is a letter that it, that's something separate that Ms. Martell will talk about. And actually, Ms. Martell, I noticed that I just kept talking and you were supposed okay. to talk about this. I was on a roll. I'm going for it. Um, so these just come back to Jamie and I, and we use them as tools to, to write our recommendation letters. Um, Ms. Martell, do you want to talk a little bit about like the letter of recommendation? Sure. So um, a little bit later, we'll go over brochure that's in the, the packet they get as well that outlines this whole process and it outlines some other stuff like SATs that we'll talk about but it also talks about the the recommendation letter which is different um, than this blue sheet so most colleges require a counselor recommendation which we use this packet to to compile um, some colleges will ask for an additional recommendation letter a teacher recommendation again, different than that blue sheet that Kim was just talking about, where a student needs to go ask a teacher if they would write them an actual letter of recommendation. Um, not all colleges require that, but if they do, uh, they're responsible to go find a teacher. So something to, to be aware of when we write the letters, um, college applications are going to ask the students if they waive their right to see their recommendation letters. Um, if they waive their right, uh, Kim and I are ethically and professionally bound to follow that, and we cannot share our letters with them or with parents. Um, so we encourage the students to waive their right because hearing from colleges, if they see that a student didn't um, initially just kind of raises a red flag for them, wondering why they're worried about that, why they would want to sort of screen the letters before they get to the colleges because the colleges really want um, fair and truthful letters. So, um, but we always wanna reassure the students as well as you that the point of the recommendation letter is to help your student achieve their goals and to get into college. So it's not ever going to be negative. We're going to obviously be truthful and professional, but, we're there to promote them. So don't worry about what's in the letter. It's not gonna be negative. If for some reason we felt we couldn't write a positive letter, then we would have a conversation with you and the student, but I've never encountered that because there's always something positive to be said, but just rest assured in that way. Some colleges won't let you um, 
not waive your right. So even though it looks like an option, you may encounter an application that if you click that you don't waive your right, you wanna see your letter first, you might not be able to proceed. So just, just know that. So that's why we encourage that you waive your right. And once you do, we need to uphold that. Also, we use a very similar letter um, if students need a recommendation for their scholarship. So we often can't share that, but it, usually there's similar rules in that they want the letter to come directly from our hands to the scholarship. So it usually doesn't pass through, but we just like to, to make that known because we see that question a lot. And I think that's just about it with the, oh, no, go ahead with the gold sheet. That's, that's kind of the, one of the most important pieces actually. So the gold sheet won't be in your student's packet, but it is in guidance and we have all kinds. Mrs. St. Louis has them right on her desk. This is sort of jumping forward in the process a little bit, but it's a really important step. So after they've applied, they've gotten everything together, they've done their part, they've clicked submit on an application, they need to come in and let us know. We don't know to do our part until they tell us. So um, if they did one application, they come in and fill out a gold sheet. If they did four, say over the weekend, they come in and put them all on one sheet. If they do one, one night, and then, you know, do one another application the next week, they just, they can get separate sheets, um, even though there's multiple spots on there. And it just asks for basic information. Where did they apply uh, their deadline? Did they use Common App, which we'll talk about in a little bit? And do they want their SAT scores sent? So sometimes we have students or parents that say, you know, I applied however long ago and my stuff hasn't, hasn't been sent yet. And sometimes uh, we go and look because Mrs. St. Louis tracks a lot of this stuff for us, including these gold sheets, and it's because they didn't do a gold sheet. So we don't know what we don't know. It's very important to let us know when they've, they've clicked submit. We don't just send uh, information out based off where the student thinks they're going to apply. For a couple of reasons, they could change their mind, but also it's not good for our stuff to get there before they've even seen the application. Um, do note that as soon as you apply, everything's so electronic these days, almost instantly, they're gonna get an email back that says, great, glad you applied, we got your application, but we're missing your transcript, your recommendation. It, it is almost instant in some cases. So just keep that in mind that there's, there's time um, that it takes to get through the process and don't let those stress you out unless you know it's been weeks and weeks, then you, you know, feel free to check if there may be an issue and we can follow up. I think that's it with our um, showing you what's in the packet. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. One thing I will say is, it, like I said, students in our success class are, have already gotten these and are working on them. Students not in our success class will be getting those and we'll be doing the same exact thing with those students that aren't in our class. We're just gonna be doing it more on like a small group or a one-on-one -on -one basis. So they're not, um, they, they're not gonna not get that information. We're gonna schedule what we call senior seminars. Um, and we're gonna make sure that all the students who are interested in applying to college two or four year are gonna have to kind of sit through and go through that packet in that application process with us. So they'll get the same information and we'll help them out every step of the way as well. So they're not kind of left in the dust. They'll, they'll, get the same, uh, they'll get the same information and the same help and support as the kids that are in our class. Mrs. Ketch, what is the due date to get all that stuff back into guidance? We're going over it in just a second there. Yeah beat us to it. So there's also a brochure or pamphlet or whatever you want to call it in their um, packet There we have extra and guidance if you want it, but you can look at theirs as well. It sort of outlines the process, a lot of what we're talking about tonight. Um, on the left, it talks about the process. So the deadline to get the, the packet in is October 15th. That being said, we stress to the students that they need to know their deadlines to the schools they're applying for. And most um, deadlines that we typically see are usually around December 1st, but we have students that have applied to other schools that, you know, there's, there's been mid-October deadlines. So if you, or, you know, it could even be early October that we don't see that as much, but if their deadline is before the 15th, they need to make sure to get it in sooner than that. So they're going to 
get all of their packet information and they can drop it off at any time to guidance prior to the 15th or sooner if they have a, an early deadline. It gets to their counselor, so Kim or I, and then, um, then they want to apply to schools. We encourage they use Common App because it's like a one-stop shop application. So if you have five schools you're interested in, instead of going to five different school websites and doing their applications, you can go to the Common App. It is a little bit more time consuming because it's a little longer um, where it has to be inclusive, but in the long run, it saves you time if you're applying to multiples. So we encourage the use of that, plus your information that you need from us can be uploaded directly through Common App. And the, if you go explore the, the site, and we'll also talk to the students more about that, but just so you're familiar with that, that term. So they apply to college. Um, we also tell them, make sure they proof that application, whether it's not many schools use paper anymore, but paper, the school's application, common application to, to edit, have somebody else look at it. We've seen students accidentally type in their name wrong and it's just a matter of their fingers moving too quickly and they didn't look through it and we've caught it. And that's, that's not the impression they wanna to send to, to colleges. So make sure they're reading it over the entire application. Um, once you've once they've submitted the application, they need to turn in that gold sheet, like I mentioned before, so that we know it's time to to get their stuff to to colleges. We also track where um, all of the colleges that students have applied to. Uh, another point that we really stress to students and parents is that their deadlines are our deadlines. And even though we know the local deadlines pretty well, we cannot know every college um, that they could possibly apply to. So it's their responsibility to be familiar with their deadlines and to give us enough time that we can meet them as well. So we do have to write a lot of letters. We do take time and pride in making sure we're writing quality letters for your students as long as they've given us time to do so. So it, it takes a little bit of time and we say we need at least a week notice um, prior to the deadline. If we get something in a less of the time frame, we'll try to get a letter, but it's likely gonna be a much more generic form letter if we are in a very short turnaround. Um, on occasion, we've been emailed the night before a deadline and at 6, 7, 8 p.m. Uh, and the deadline's at midnight and we can't guarantee that we're gonna see that, that email. You know, we might, but we, there's no guarantee there. So we really, really stress, um, especially deadlines are important in college that they know them and they know that there are deadlines as well. So. I did have Jump a student, just, just as a quick share here, I, I had a student last year, it was a little bit heartbreaking, you know, that um, some, some of the more competitive um, majors, they're, they're hard and fast with their deadline. And it's hard because sometimes high school students, like deadlines are sort of like soft deadlines and like, oh, okay, you can hand that in the day before. It's a whole different world with the college application process. If they say a deadline is December 1st for like, say the nursing program, um, and the student, you know, hands it in December 2nd, if those are, if they're full, they're going to say, thank you for submitting that application. Um, we may, we may accept you, you know, into, let's say, you Maine, um, but I'm sorry, our nursing program is full. You didn't meet that deadline. And that would, that was a really, we've had a few instances that that was kind of a really hard, hard lesson to learn. So we, we want to make sure that uh, your students get into where they want to get into. Uh, let's see. So we're going to jump ahead a few months in the process. They've applied to college. They're waiting to hear back. They finally start getting their letters. So as they get letters of acceptance, we need copies of all of them, even if they don't know where they're going yet. The most important thing is just to bring them in, have Mrs. St. Louis copy them, and she'll give back the original. Um, that's how they get on our fancy little brag board in the guidance office that shows where they've been accepted to, but it's also how we track things and makes them eligible for our internal scholarship committee. Um, it's important to know once they've made up their mind where they're going to, because some of those scholarships are dependent on what major they're in or what school they're in. Uh, so important to bring those in. And then any scholarship they get outside of school like our internal school um, scholarship committee, we need to have copies of that as well. So when you get your acceptance to a college and they're awarding you a certain amount of money, we need a copy of that. 
if you apply to different scholarships through internet searches or maybe your parents work has a scholarship wherever if you get a scholarship somewhere else we need a letter or an email um, and we need those submitted by june 3rd because mrs st louis needs a week to compile all of that information because if anybody's been to scholarship and award night and they hear all the different scholarships that are read off for students a lot of that comes from external sources and the only way we know to read them is because the student brought them in if it doesn't get brought in it doesn't get read unless it's awarded from our internal committee so that's an important date as well to make sure those get in I just wanted to make a side note that the students get really anxious understandably because I remember being that being that you know student being that parent so when students apply, sometimes they're like, after a week, they're like, I haven't heard anything. Um, because it's an anxious waiting game after that to, to receive your, uh, you know, either your acceptance or non-acceptance. Some schools are really good and they have a really quick turnaround. Um, COVID kind of puts a different spin on it. So we, we noticed last year things were taking a little bit longer um, for, for students to get, um, to hear back from colleges. It doesn't mean they're not accepted. It just means that they might have a shortened staff. That's what we found um, in a lot of, in a lot of situations, a lot of um, schools still admission staff kind of working remotely maybe, or only a couple people are on that day. So some students were getting acceptances and then other students who even applied at similar times weren't hearing back and they're like freaking out. Um, don't worry, <laughs> it's it's a process on their end too. It's it's something we can't control. Um, if it's been a you know if it's been kind of a a decent amount of time, absolutely. Like we definitely can follow up and just check in on the progress of their application. Um, but it, it does take time. Some schools that some Ivy League schools um, they won't hear until almost early spring. Um, late winter, early spring. It's just kind of how how they how they set up their kind of acceptances. Um, so so don't worry. But you know, if you if you want to email us, if you're freaking out or your your students freaking out, email us, um, and hopefully we can kind of ease that a little bit for you and, um, and just help support support you. Okay. So the other pieces that are in the, the pamphlet, we pretty much went over. There's a section about the recommendations, but I've um, already mentioned that. And then there's information about getting help. Um, Meredith Lee is here. It, it points out that we have that resource as well as how to contact Kim and myself to, to get help. We have, um, as we mentioned earlier, the senior seminars to get this information out to seniors. We have seniors in our Success 101 class. And then if, people that aren't in our class need help, we, we schedule time with them. We will try to have a common app work session for students that need help to go through that. We also have senior meetings that each senior needs to meet with their counselor at least once. They can meet with us 10 times if they need to, but at least once to, to make sure they have a plan for after high school. And then there's also a section um, about standardized testing and college essays that uh, Kim is going to go a little bit over and then on the very back, there's just some useful links like the Common App and the um, FSA ID and, and things like that that you might find useful. All right, so so SATs are a big buzz right now, especially with COVID. There's a there's a lot of schools who have um, gone what we call test optional. So meaning you don't have to send your SAT score if you do. Um, send it, they can't unsee it, and they have to factor it into the admissions decision. Um, so a lot of times kids are asking, well, you know, should I take the SAT? Uh, our recommendation is yes, um, because it covers all your all, all the bases. Um, I have my own opinion about the SAT, but I won't get get on my soapbox, because uh, it's one test on one day. Um, but and that being said, um, for instance, the University of Maine, they have been test optional. That being said, they also have this gray area uh, where we've talked to the admissions and they said, yes, you're, we're, we're test optional. However, if the SAT score is um, going to uh, like benefit or help their application, 
they should send it because it they have different in typical of most schools, different tiers of, of merit scholarships. Um, and they had said to us, it could bump a, a student up to the next tier of, of merit scholarship. So it could, unfortunately, or fortunately, um, the SAT can be tied to, to money, free money for, for students. So we, we just tell students, take, take the SAT, you know, take it once, you can take it again. They, they super score, school, schools tend to super score. So what they do is if I take the SAT and I don't know, say I took it in August and I took it in November, in August, my, my, I had, um, you know, I don't know, like a 500 in my math, but in November I had a 550 in my math. They're going to use that 550 and they're going to pair it with my highest, um, kind of that, that English piece, that English reading, writing piece. So they're going to take, no matter when they take it, they'll take their, their best math score and their, their best, um, uh, kind of the English reading writing score. And that's what they'll um, that's what they'll look at to make some of their decisions. So a lot of schools aren't using them to admit students, but they are using them um, for their scholarships. So our recommendation is they take it. We have one coming up in November. Uh, if students students have to get into their college board account and sign up themselves, um, and there's a payment there and so forth. If they need help at all, we do that all the time. Um, as long as like the students have the payment, we can take them through and do that and, and work that through with them. If, if the SAT is a financial burden, um, please, please, please don't let that stand in the way of your student taking it. Um, shoot me a message or Miss Martell or have your student come see us. We have um, SAT waivers uh, that we can use uh, to waive those SAT fees uh, to make it equitable. So kids can, can take those SATs. Um, students who actually have, have the waivers there, they also have, um, I think up to like five uh, college application fees that are, can be free to as long as the college um, is is accepting that. So there's there's that. But please email us if you have any questions about that. Have your student come see us. We'll be happy to help. A lot of times people will ask, "What is a good SAT score?" It's a really difficult answer. Um, it depends on the school. Um, you can pretty much go on the school or Google a school even and look at kind of like their their average and kind of figure that out um, That out there. Students need help with that, you can let us know. Um, so yeah, I, that's, that's kind of the SAT piece. As far as uh, the college essay, uh, again, students in our success class, we'll take them through that college essay. Uh, very rarely does a college not require an essay as part of our class, we, we, we make them do the essay. <laughs> uh, because it's good practice and it's part of the common app anyway. Um, for those students not in our class, we will still help them. I think Ms. Martell mentioned that um, we're gonna try to do like a tape, like a, a workshop on the college essay and go over so students can go back and look at it. And we'll talk about exactly what we talk about um, in our success class. Um, you know, how to do the college essay. The college essay typically is, is one of the most difficult parts of applying to college we found with, with students. Sometimes they struggle with, you know, what the heck do I write about? And we help them through that process. Um, and it, we're thankful for many admissions counselors that we've picked their brains and so forth. And so we have some really great resources to share with them. Great handout, teach them how to brainstorm and um, kind of really focus on, um, on their essay. So yeah, so that's, that's pretty much that piece. Um, I don't know. Is there any? Are there any questions at this point? That that's kind of our, in a nutshell, the college application process. But feel free if anybody wants to take their their mic off and ask a question, we'd be happy to answer anything. It's nothing in the chat so far. Okay. And and don't hesitate if you're not comfortable speaking up or something comes to you later on. Um, email us, email us, or have your student come in and ask. We'd be absolutely happy to answer that. But I promise that I've been there in that seat where my, my, my 
two kids have just graduated, let me say 2017 and 2019. So I remember when my, my first one came through, I was so glad I went through with it because I was the parent that was kind of freaking out about things like, why is this happening? What is going on? Why are we waiting so long? Um, so I'm glad I went through it as a parent because now, you know, that piece, I, I, we've been where you are. So I empathize with some of those, uh, some of those feelings and those anxieties and things like that. Um, but we, well, I'll help you. We, we will help you work through them. I promise we, um, we will support your, your student and, and do what we need to do. We've been doing this for a while. So we have had kids go everywhere from, you know, Harvard Ivy league to, you know, Eastern Maine community college, um, and anywhere in between. So, uh, yeah, reach out. Just to reiterate a piece that Ms. Martell said, it really got both of Kim and I, when it first happened, you get a letter in the mail from UMaine or wherever you apply that says, thanks for applying, but we're missing these pieces. Just remember, it is a form letter and it gets activated as soon as your kiddo hits submit. It doesn't mean we haven't done our piece and sometimes things cross in the mail. Um, it absolutely is nerve wracking because you're like, oh no, they don't have what they need to apply. It is a form letter, it gets crossed in the mail. Um, Kim and I both had that reaction of, I know that I know that it gets sent. And, so, and my, my, and my, kid had, my kid had Miss Martell, so I know that she sent it because I know that she uploaded it. <laughs> so, um, and sometimes things, like we upload things and the cool part about, I guess one, one cool part about the Common App is it shows like when things are uploaded on the on the student's end and on our end, like I we can see when your student um, uploaded and submitted their applications. And we can also see when the school downloaded their application. Um, and then there's that whole processing time. So there, there are pieces there, um, it, but we can also see, you know, when we submitted our, our end of it, like, so we upload their transcripts, we upload their letter of recommendations, um, any teacher recommendations are, are uploaded there, and we can see when they download those as well. So, so sometimes th there's definitely lag time. And then again, you throw COVID on top of it and in schools, um, universities, colleges, handling things differently, definitely there's a little bit of lag time. That's where those deadlines are, are super important and getting things done, you know, ahead of time, even not waiting till maybe that last minute, so. Excellent. All right, so why don't we take just a quick five minute stretch break, um, get up and walk away from your computer for a minute. We'll transition and get Myla ready. Um, to do her presentation. So I have 642 on my uh, watch. So we'll start again at 647. I am going to pause this recording and then we'll start again um, with the second half. So give us about five minutes, take a break, get a drink, and then we'll be right back. <laughs> 